I got started as a collector, like every boy of 11, 12, with a notebook, you know, collecting signatures. Eventually I started writing to people to ask them uh, to write back. They sent back hundreds of responses. I came back from school trying to see if Chagall or Miró or Rubinstein or Golda Meir had answered my letter, you know, and they did. I'm interested in, in too wide a variety of things. I decided to collect uh, the four to 5,000 people I think have been most active in, uh, since the 1500s uh, in the areas I focus on, art, science, literature, music, entertainment, and history, which is very wide. And I think I got pretty close to that absurd aim uh, but it's very nice to have a sort of objective like that, that you know is impossible to attain, but you keep trying. I came first here at 17 and I thought it was a sacred temple. I was uh, completely in awe of everything I saw here. Uh, well, after 40 years of my first visit, the, the idea unfolded. I never showed my collection in a public exhibition and uh, I'm absolutely thrilled to be able to share it with the public. Obvious names like Churchill, like uh, Lenin, or like Mozart, Beethoven, you know, uh, Oscar Wilde, Picasso, uh, Frida Kahlo, who has become much more famous than her husband, you know, 40 years ago when I started collecting. She was just a footnote in Diego Rivera's life. So everything changes a lot. The Proust fragment is a very special item because it's a torn piece of paper, and he grabbed the first piece of paper he could find because he had a brilliant idea and it records the moment of creation of the first paragraphs of arguably the most important novel of the 20th century, Remembrance of Things Past. The Gandhi letter I got in Portugal um, when I was 19, more than 40 years ago, it was in a bunch of papers relating to Gandhi's sons and uh, I remember paying one dollar for this particular letter. I think it was one of the greatest finds of my career. And uh, it moved me immediately because I noticed it was a very late letter to a person who was asking him a favor. I will have time to spare in the future, but right now I'm concentrating uh, on quenching a fire. The odds are so great that the fire may quench me instead of my quenching it. That was as a sort of prophetic letter uh, 10 months before his assassination. About a quarter of the items in this exhibition are signed photos. I'm particularly sensitive to uh, photographs that are signed by the sitter because in a way it's an endorsed image of themselves. You don't describe a photo that you don't like. And very often also they are made by very important uh, photographers, artists, so it links uh, photography with the, the manuscript world. The letter of Freud to his mother, you know, I mean, of course, Freud to his mother, it's already quite nice, but she's 94, it's her birthday, and he sends her six dollars for her to spend as she pleases. This one of Hitchcock as well, you know, being obliged to sign an affidavit of non-communist killed member to be able to film in the early 50s America. And all the letters of Monet were already too expensive for me. This one seemed like a notarial document of little importance, so he sold it for a sum I could barely afford. It is an agreement with the brother of Manet to make a loan of a thousand francs, which was not a very important sum. I mean, he would maintain him for a few months. And as a collateral, he leaves 35 of his paintings. You know, so this do few documents can evoke so well, you know, uh, the poverty and the conditions, the difficult beginnings of that group of painters that became the Impressionists. The Van Gogh letter could be confused for a trivial letter. Uh, it's written two months before his death, and uh, it's written to the innkeepers in R, where he had lived for several years. He was just uh, still in the asylum in Saint Rémy, but going to Paris. And it seems just a letter asking them to send some things to Paris and keeping others. But by explaining what should go to Paris and what should stay, he makes us an inventory of his room, which is arguably the most famous room in Western painting. The magic of handwriting is this extraordinary capacity for autograph items 
to transport you into certain moments of time. You get involved, but it has this extraordinary capacity of being almost a time tunnel, you know, and you feel a very special connection with the people who wrote the document.